everyone, and welcome to a review of the Android Open Source Illusion Project ROM for the Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL. In this video, I'll be reviewing the January build of the ROM and also doing it on my Pixel 3. There are a few things I appreciate about this ROM and the maintainer Josh Fox, XLX Fox XXLX. The first thing is being the activeness within the ROM thread on XDA, second being his detailed update post, listing fixes, new and changed features and functionality. Lastly, updates in line with the security updates for each month for our pixels. Now maybe not the speediest, I don't really have a clue on how to build and maintain custom ROMs, but it's pretty darn fast from my point of view. I don't usually count the number of features or tweaks that each ROM includes in their tweaks manager, but it would be safe to say that the Owl's Nest, the settings menu, which contains all the controls for the tweaks, has a very extensive number of tweaks. There are some additional options that aren't in the Owl's Nest, but we'll go over that a little bit later. Here are some things that I appreciate from the feature set that the ROM presents. First are the additional lock screen tweaks and themes for the lock screen clock. I'm liking the SAMI as for a Samsung-esque uh, vertical clock, and the analog clock as well that's available. And if you choose to disable the lock screen clock and additional information such as the date notifications and stuff like that, the clock and details will still remain on your ambient display, which is a pretty nice touch. Smart Pixels is another great addition. Toggling this will disable a percentage of pixels. I typically use this when in battery saver mode, or when I need the brightness to lower even further than what the traditional brightness slider can do. The percentages range from 12 to 88% of pixels, so you can play around with that to find the right balance. And I would also recommend turning on burn-in protection, so you don't leave any burn-in marks on your OLED screen. Although this ROM doesn't have the notification ticker as an option, you can still customize how your heads-up notifications will work. And speaking of notifications, there's also an ambient music ticker which shows the current song playing on your phone on the ambient display. You can double tap on the music ticker to skip the track that it's currently playing. This doesn't interfere with the Pixel's now playing feature and will simply work with the music ticker. Now if you disable the ambient display and enable this option, you'll still get a nice clean ambient display with just the music ticker on display. You can also change the accent of the system and apply a dark theme which is system wide. If you're looking for a pitch black experience, turn on black AF. Granted, if you like using your phone in direct sunlight or in a very well lit room, I tend not to turn on the dark theme since it's not very readable in those situations, but you can actually quickly toggle this using the accent quick settings tile, which can be toggled between changing the accent and the theme. So you can pretty much change this on the fly without having to go back into the settings app and go into display and pressing a few more buttons. And finally, probably the best news out there, ActiveEdge is now working on custom ROMs, thanks to the efforts of some dirty unicorn developers on building support for it from the ground up. So you can adjust the sensitivity as you would on stock, and then also select the squeeze action from the default one, which is to do nothing, a system related action, so you can even open up the Google Assistant as you normally would, or select it to turn off the screen, or put it on, I think, silent or vibrate. And also you can choose an app or a shortcut to launch when you do squeeze it. Now there aren't any additional options here such as double squeeze or a long squeeze, but I think some other ROMs might have that, but we might be able to see it here sooner or later. Now as for performance, there has been no change. It's still that Pixel 3 that we all know and mostly love. As for stability, all is good on this ROM. No weird battery drains or weird system UI crashes. And the great thing about the Illusion project is that the bundled apps that it comes with on a clean flash is so minimal. It allows you to choose what you want to have on your phone. Now, if you like using most of the Google apps, then this might be a little bit of a pain having to disable or uninstall the Android open source project apps that you've replaced with your own Google ones. But that should be quick since there aren't too many to begin with. Now, usually I like to say that there is no best ROM out there. People are different in their wants and desires. So as long as it fulfills my wants, of it being stable and that it doesn't kill the battery more than I'm used to, then it's a good ROM for me. I can't really say if it's a good ROM for you, but it would be best for you to go ahead and flash it and give it the fair shake of the source bottle. And what that means is to flash it and give it a proper go, maybe for a week or two. Now the Android Open Source Illusion project is one that is clean cut, stable, but still feature rich, allowing you to make it yours easily. And I would highly recommend this ROM. It has a really cool boot animation as well. So thanks for watching, and if you like this video, slap that like button. And if you have any questions, queries, or requests, feel free to leave it down below in the comments section. But even better yet, 
why don't you join us on Discord, a fantastic cross-platform communication tool. A link to that is here on screen now and also can be found in the more info down below. And as always, happy flashing.